So let's um, just a little bit of housekeeping, really. I first thing is no time. Oh, there we are. We're on ten thirty-five. That's great. Just looking at what the time was. First of all, it's so lovely to see everyone. We're doing church a little bit differently today. Um, bit of an experiment. I mean, I've led one or two little Zoom meetings, but not nearly as many people as this. So um, please um, bear with, as uh, as is uh, the little saying. Um, it's lovely to see everyone, and. We are the, the plan for today is that probably for the majority of the service we'll put everyone on mute because if you if you know how Zoom works, basically the person who makes the most noise that it picks up that sound. <laughs> so if we put you all on mute, then you can cough away or you can you know slurp your cup of tea or whatever or giggle or whatever and uh, and it won't interrupt the flow. <laughs> Uh, so you may well be on mute, but you're very welcome to unmute yourself if you want to contribute in any way at any point. Um, I don't think that we can unmute you, uh, so you'll need you may need to do that. Um, but we'll we will keep an eye on that as we go along. But just let you know, for example, when someone's going. <laughs> um, um, the idea today is that we're going to have a worship service together. We will have um, opportunity for praying and reading scripture and hearing from uh, God's word. We will have some songs. Because you're on mute, you can sing along to your heart's content when the songs come up. It won't be Rob and Paula. Uh, if they are off of uh, YouTube, songs off of YouTube, uh, but you are welcome to sort of sing along. No one Happy will anniversary from Joy. Uh, so, <laughs> You're you're very welcome. We oh, what? Oh, was go. I muted then? Yes. Oh, yeah, I muted. Everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to be quick. It didn't quite work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd really like us to start with a, a moment of quiet. I'm going to read some words of scripture and then um, a YouTube clip will come up um, for us to sing together. It's a, a classic song that you all know called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, but it has been updated with some new, uh, some new words, some new uh, verses. So if you want to join in, you'll certainly know the, the, the uh, tune, that's for sure. Um, and I just thought it was appropriate really on a Zoom meeting it's lovely to see everyone but it's not very easy to make eye contact and Jesus invites us this morning to make eye contact with him he invites us to meet his gaze to turn our eyes upon him so I'm going to read some words from Luke chapter 4 and then hopefully the music will come up and the screen will come up for you to sing to Luke chapter 4 says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found a place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the years, the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and the man. Things of 
Jesus meeting your gaze this morning wherever you are sitting whoever you are with if you are alone or with others We thank you, Jesus, that we can gather together in this different way. We thank you for the opportunity, because of technology, to see each other's faces, to hear each other's voices, to worship Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord. And we gather as your people today to thank you we gather with grateful hearts 
Father, we thank you for Fellowship News. We thank you for Margaret and Rob and for their marriage of 62 years. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the example of that. And we pray for them today, a new blessing over them. We pray for them today, Lord, a new uh, burst of your grace and your joy and your peace and your love to fill them and surround their marriage. May today be a great celebration for them, Lord Jesus. Even in the home where they are now, may there be something quite special for them to be able to celebrate together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for them and for their marriage. Mm -hmm. We thank you that Terry has been able to come out uh, of hospital, Lord, and we pray your continued healing for him. We thank you for those who have joined us this morning who perhaps we have not been able to be in touch with quite so much recently. We think of Yvonne and Margaret in particular, but possibly others as well, Lord Jesus, in this gathering. And we thank you, Father God, for this church family that we are a part of. And we come to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you receive us with open arms you welcome, welcome us and you rejoice in our praises. I'm going to play another song. This is Amazing Grace.
This is amazing grace. I don't know if anyone would like to unmute themselves and, uh, and, and say a prayer of thanksgiving and praise just in these few moments. If you want to say a short prayer of thanksgiving, do feel free to, to do that. I hope that it's possible to, for you to unmute yourselves to do that or just indicate and one of us will unmute you. Lord, I want to be more like you. Mm. Someday the storm clouds will lighten. The tempest around me will cease. Rainbows my skies will brighten, flooding my pathway with peace. Hold down me up and I shall be safe and I will have respect unto thy statues continually. Mm. Thank you. Yes, Jesus, thank you. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, Father, I just thank you for your unfailing grace and your mercy. I just thank you for all the good things that you are doing in our lives, Father God, even now in, in difficult times. And I just praise you that we can all be here together, Father God, one family joining in worshipping you, Lord. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. We acknowledge, Heavenly Father, that um, this feels a, a bit strange to us and we're in strange circumstances, but we do thank you that you are the same yesterday, today and forever, and your grace is unfailing. And so we bless you, Lord God, for this time together. Mm -hmm. And pray, Holy Spirit, again, come in and refresh each of our souls today. Lead us by still waters. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Now... I'm very distracted by things going on. No, no, it's fine. Um, we're going to have a reading now, and I'm just going to give a few thoughts on that reading. I've asked Maureen and Sean if they would read to us from Psalm 43 and Psalm, four, sorry, 42 and 43. So they're going to read that through. If you've got your Bible with you, you might want to look that up. But Psalm. 42 and Psalm 43 together, read by Maureen and Sean. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. In your, all your ways and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? 
Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Vindicate me, O oh God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. You are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? For your trust, for your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Thank you both. And let's let's just ask God to speak to us through his word. Thank you for your word today, Heavenly Father, that uh, song that we have just heard read. And we pray that you will speak to our souls and to our hearts and minds, that we will respond to you through that word today. Amen. So you might have recognised those words. Um, if from nothing else, from the song that, you know, we know very well, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Actually, what Sean and Maureen read was two psalms that um, is in effect one hymn with three choruses and this this chorus that comes back again three times and it's a song of lament it's a song of sorrow there's sadness even perhaps a um, depression in the in the psalmist who has written it he talks about tears as a diet he obviously hasn't been living on my diet through um, lockdown. I doubt he's going to be quite as large as me. <laughs> um, tears as a diet. His soul is downcast. He's questioning, where are you, God? He's got a, a feeling of rejection and abandonment from God. And he's missing the people of God. He's missing gathered worship with the people of God. And yet in this place of lament, he, the song is also sung with hope and with longing. He recognises God's love and God's song over him in the night time. I love that um, phrase. He repeats aloud the truths. He, he talks about God as his rock, God as his stronghold. He anticipates the light of God coming into this dark place and God's truth and guidance. And he also anticipates that moment when he will gather at the altar with God's people in worship. And there's joy and there's a delight in that anticipation. And as I read this psalm a couple of days back now, it really resonated with me. I particularly was reminded again of this psalmist who has this deep sense of desire that he expresses, this deep sense of desire for God's spirit in his own soul to worship God personally, but also that deep sense of desire that he has to gather with God's people and worship together. Verse two says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God, where can I go and meet with God? You know, and as we meet this morning, we pray that we have come to this place. OK, it's our laptops or our um, tablets or our phones or whatever. But we pray that as we have come to this place, we will meet with the living God. I'm going to ask Graham to put a couple of pictures up on um, the screen for you. This is some lockdown art that uh, Graham and Charlotte and myself, mainly Charlotte really, has um, created. You can see that she's done this. Oh, can you see that? You can't see it yet. It's coming. Um, share screen. <laughs> it's, it's complicated. There, we're sharing our screen. I think you can see it now. Put your thumbs up if you can see a picture of living waters. Can you see that? Yeah, fantastic. Um, 
So this is like nails into wood and string wrapped around it. And if you put the next one up, you can see where um, it then um, we put it up by our by our put by our uh, pond in our garden. So um, and this was an interesting little um, exercise for us during lockdown. You can I think that's it. Um, but we had to sort of choose which words to use. We had to choose what we were going to put up um, in front of the um, pond. And we chose the words living water. And Charlotte was interested in a couple of days after we put it up and she put some pictures up. She said, to, she said, so my friend asked what living waters are. And, uh, and I said, well, it, it's God, isn't it? So, so, and it set my mind thinking really, well, what, what does it mean when we write living waters up? And so I sort of looked in scripture and I looked um, at the words that Jesus used in John chapter seven. He stands in front of a big crowd during, uh, during the festival. I think it was probably Passover and he stood up and he cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And by this he meant the spirit. And there's this lovely invitation from Jesus to come to him, to drink from him streams of living water. And of course, a thousand years before Jesus stood and gave that invitation to these crowds of people, this psalmist wrote these words and expresses his thirst, his desire for God, the living God, as a deer pants for living waters. The phrase living waters in that sense was um, streams that continue to flow even through the dry season. Streams that didn't um, dry up at all. Streams that continued to give life through the time when it was most difficult to find water and refreshment. And, and those streams of water were called living waters. And I absolutely love that. And the psalmist says, my, as the deer pants for those living waters that don't dry up, so my soul thirsts for the living God. And I wonder how coronavirus lockdown and epidemic and this whole journey has been for you in your body, mind and soul. I wonder how your faith has fared. How is your mental health held up? I wonder how your soul is today. Perhaps like me, perhaps like the psalmist, you have a deep thirst, a hunger, a longing for living waters to refresh your soul. And the invitation that Jesus gave to the people to come to him to receive that refreshment. That invitation is open to each one of us today. Come to me, he says. Anyone who is thirsty, I wonder how thirsty we are. I wonder how much we desire to be refreshed by the spirit of the living God in our souls today. The Psalmist also had a deep longing to be in God's presence with others. For some reason, he hasn't been able to meet for worship with the people of God. And of course, we can relate to that, can't we? Um, Leanne sent a little picture to us on our house group uh, WhatsApp, which I thought was quite amusing. Um, we're going to just share it to you. This might be how uh, booking to go to church might look like in the future. It's the, um, someone on the end of the phone line saying, well, the best I can do for Christmas Eve is three together in the ninth row which I thought was quite amusing. I do hope it doesn't get to the point where we have to phone up and book our tickets to get into church. But certainly going back to church is going to take a little while. Going back to being as we have been is going to take a little while, I suspect. We don't know quite why um, the psalmist hadn't been able 
to um, meet with others for worship. It may have been that he had sickness. It may have been that he was ceremonially unclean. Most likely, and most commentators believe, that it was probably because this psalm was written while the Israelites were in exile, while the Hebrews were in exile in Babylon, in another country, in a foreign land, where there was not a temple for them to gather together for worship. And so gathering with God's people had been halted for many years. And the psalmist says his heart is broken, tears have been my food. And, and he's taunted by people, where is your God now? And he remembers with that great passion and fondness, I think it's verse four, how I would go with the throng and lead the procession to the house of God. And there's this memory that he has of great joy and celebration. And as I read this, I found this quite challenging. I found the psalmist's desire and longing to be back with the people of God in worship quite a challenge. You see, my problem is I found it quite comfortable doing church these last few months. PJs on the settee with a cup of coffee, turning up at 29 minutes past 10, countdown, Rob and Paul are doing the whole thing, switch on. If I don't like a song, I don't have to join in. Don't have to talk to anybody. You might have any difference of opinion from me. It's been very comfortable. It hasn't cost me anything. And the thought of us potentially being able to go back into church life may be costly for us to gathering together for worship and I wonder if I have and I wonder if you have that same yearning and desire that the psalmist has to gather with God's people together or if perhaps like me you're holding on to the comfort of lockdown worship. You see, I don't know about you, but church and gathered worship for me is a quirky and strange phenomena. It can be all things extraordinary. It can be incredibly infuriating. It can be frustrating and yet at the same time beautiful and engaging and uplifting. At its best, when we gather together to worship God, we find a place of grace. We find a place where it's possible to start afresh again and again and again with each other and with God. At its best, our gathered worship church together is a place that welcomes me, whatever shame or guilt I may carry at that moment. At its best, it's a gathering that helps me to look beyond today and to get that eternal perspective. It's a place where I can recalibrate my life with other disciples of Jesus to lift him high and put him back in the right place. And when I feel low, I can go into church and I can see the love of Christ in my brothers and sisters. And when I'm rejoicing for a wedding anniversary or a birthday or whatever it may be, I receive the joy of Christ from my brothers and sisters. And when I am like the psalmist wondering where is God, why my soul is downcast, I find the presence of God in the worship of my brothers and sisters of my church family. And I'm reminded, as I think the psalmist knew, that gathered worship is worth the effort. Jesus is worth the effort. Being in his presence together is worth the effort. It's a privilege. It's a miracle. When we gather together, it's far more than the sum of all of us lot. It's all of us lot with the Holy Spirit present, the almighty living God present. 
It's a place where heaven touches earth. Gathered worship is a place of vision, of salvation, of hope. And my friends, I want to encourage you. Can we be praying together for our church leaders? Can we be praying for a real uh, wisdom for them as we seek to gather back together? What's the best way, the right way? How do we go about that path? How do we do that? And how are we gracious together in that journey that no one's ever been on before? How do we do it? The psalmist prayed this in Psalm 43. He asked God, send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide us and lead us to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. And then we will go to the altar of God, our joy and our delight, and we will praise you, O God. And I think that's a pretty good prayer for us to hold on to as we pray for our leaders, as we pray for each other. Send your light and your truth and let them guide us to your holy mountain. And so I found this challenging and inspiring. As we move out of lockdown and as we slowly begin to anticipate the fact that we will meet together again in real life and we'll be able to look each other in the eye properly, and we might even be able to shake hands, although that might be a little while down the line. But we can give each other jazz hands and acknowledge each other face to face as we slowly move in that direction. However that may look, may the living waters of the Holy Spirit fill each of us each day and fill us together as well as we anticipate meeting. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Amen. We're going to have an opportunity um, to pray together. Um, I've asked Hilary and Paul to lead us in prayer. But just before we do that, I wonder if there's anybody who um, would like to share a testimony of thanksgiving or who would like to ask for anything for prayer. We're going to try and keep a little eye on you. Um, and you might want to, you, if you know how to, please do unmute yourself or just indicate with your hand if you'd like to share anything. Um, and we'll just have one or two people if they would like to share any testimonies or thoughts on that. Everyone's being a bit careful how they scratch their head now, just in case. <laughs> Does anyone want to share anything or ask for any prayer? Thank you, Wendy. Do you want to unmute yourself, Wendy? Yes. Um, I, I read this this morning and I thought uh, if you asked, I would like to share it. Thank you. Um, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Thank you, lovely reminder. And that's a great reminder as we talk about gathering together, how we love one another. Thank you, Wendy. I wonder if anyone else has anything they'd like to share at all. It's hard to keep an eye on everyone. There's lots of faces. It's lovely. Okay. I'm going to ask Hilary 
and Paul, if they will unmute themselves. And uh, perhaps if you would lead us in some prayers of intercession, prayers for our world, prayers for others, where, whatever's God's led, led you. Thank you both. I think you're on mute at the moment, are you? No, there you are. You're off. That's great. Thank you both. I think this falls to me and it's just been lovely to to get together in such an atmosphere of thanksgiving and such a worshipful frame of mind and that's a very good place to start if we actually want to intercede together with power for things which are beyond ourselves. I think we could start actually just by uh, a little bit of that, a little bit more thanksgiving and then we'll move through some prayers on a more local level and out into the community and out into the world. So let's pray in thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that we can be here today meeting in this way. Thank you, Lord, for our health and for our freedom. Thank you too that you have begun to show us who you are and to teach us to love you and to trust you. Thank you that we are safe in your hands. But Lord, we're so concerned about what we've been seeing going on around us for so much sickness and tragedy and for so many lives altered by the pandemic. So let's pray for those we know who have particular issues. First of all, for those who have lost their jobs. And please mention the names of anyone that you know in your own, in your own prayers, in your own house. Pray for those who have lost a loved one. and for the children whose education has been upset. And for those whose relationships have been put under too much pressure by these circumstances. Lord, please help every person whose name has been mentioned to find a way forward. Let's pray too for our government, constantly trying to find a way for us all through our difficulties. Lord, challenge any in government whose motives are not pure and cause justice to prevail. Father, we are aware that the pandemic has put pressure on nations across the world and we have seen terrible results from this. Let's pray now for those in some countries particularly affected. Lord, we pray for those in Yemen <clears throat> suffering from poverty and sickness in a country torn apart by war and now unable to receive aid due to the pandemic. Lord, please be merciful, especially to the children and give strength to those trying to help. We pray too for Christians in Nigeria, where there's been an outpouring of hatred from extremists and where hundreds have been killed, villages have been destroyed, and people have been displaced while the authorities have had their minds on other things. Lord, we also see the leaders of some countries taking the opportunity to make moves to strengthen their power base. We see the resurgence of ISIS in Iraq and of other extremist groups across the world. We see outbreaks of violence and lawlessness in our own land and in other countries. Lord, will you open our eyes to see beyond our personal concerns, to see clearly what is happening in our world and to play our part in praying for your protection. 
And as we close, let's just say again, Jesus, you are the Lord. We thank you and worship you from our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for leading us in prayer, Hilary. I'm going to draw our time together to a close. We've got one more song that we're going to use on YouTube, um, which is by Rend Collective, Build Your Kingdom Here. It talks about us being the church um, and uh, ask God to change the atmosphere and ask God to, to be at work and, and such. But just wanted to say uh, just before we do that, if you would like to stay afterwards and uh, chat with a few people, like you might after co you know after church with coffee, um, Leanne, bless her, has worked out how we can put people into small groups of five or six because it's quite difficult to talk when there's however many of us there are. I don't know how many of us are, thirty people or something, but it is possible to chat in small groups um, and perhaps to do that for five minutes or so, 10 minutes, catch up and then move back again. And you can leave at any time if you want to. So anyway, if you would like to be a part of that, you're very welcome to, or obviously if you want to leave, um, that's absolutely fine. We're going to close our service sort of officially with this uh, song from Rend Collective, Build Your Kingdom Here. Hopefully you can hear this all right. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst we refuse to waste our lives for you are our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the poor
show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land Set your church on fire Win this nation back Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray Let's, let's pray as we finish our time together. Father, thank you for the joy um, exuded by those folks in that, uh, in that band. And uh, we pray that you will come and fill us, set your church on fire, awake the seed of your kingdom in our souls, Lord God, that uh, the darkness will fear, that the streets and the land will be healed. We pray for that wonderful awakening of us and your church and uh, father god thank you that you're at work in us uh, in our own homes in our own small uh, places of uh, social distancing and uh, and bubbles at the moment lord god but also that you will burst out um, as your church is able to regather in the future and so father we thank you for this opportunity and and we invite you to um, fill us again as we go into another week and I'm going to suggest something a little bit radical. I'm going to suggest that we try and all unmute and we say together the grace. So I wonder if we're able to somehow all unmute. That's up to Leanne. Leanne, can you? <laughs> Everyone yeah. unmuted? There we go. So we're going to say the words of the grace together. May the grace of Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the Holy Spirit be with us all, nevermore, Amen.